Hello, I am Victor Lopez. Thank you very much for uh, viewing uh, yet another of my uh, poetry readings. Uh, this one is limited to a sampler of my sonnets uh, written over the last uh, 42 years uh, from uh, my uh, late teens until uh, until today, basically. Uh, I am a professor of uh, legal studies at Hofstra University, and I'm, I'm certainly much better known for my nonfiction, you know, my textbooks and trade books uh, and reference books, primarily on law-related uh, subjects and, uh, uh, and other nonfiction uh, subject matter. Uh, but poetry is very important to me and it's really at the core of who I am as a person. You can tell a great deal about how I think and what I value uh, in terms of uh, my nonfiction, uh, but very little about who I am uh, as a person. You know, what is at the core of uh, you know my heart and soul? And uh, poetry is the one type of writing that uh, basically exposes that. Uh, you know, raw. And, uh, uh, and and real in, 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 in a way that no other type of writing can. Uh, even though I have written uh, by far uh, much more in the nonfiction area than in the uh, fiction area, uh, I sort of think of uh, nonfiction uh, prose as writing in primary colors. And uh, when it comes to uh, poetry, it's more uh, having access to the full spectrum of the rainbow. Uh, and even in an inarticulate poet with a very small P, such as myself, anyone who writes poetry is, I suppose, a poet uh, by, uh, by definition, but you know, I'm not particularly uh, uh, you know, good at this. Uh, it's just something that's very important to me. Uh, and even a very minor poet, such as myself, uh, has, I think, the ability to uh, to reach uh, people uh, and to express ideas in a way that is much more powerful and very different from writing uh, prose. I can say a lot more in a uh, in a sonnet uh, than in uh, probably the novel that I just finished writing and that I hope uh, will be published uh, sometime over the coming year. Uh, it's compact and uh, it's, it's just a very different type of writing. So again, forgive me, but for, for what it's worth, I hope you will enjoy some of these. They are important to me. And I have to say that even though I, uh, I lecture for a living and I write for a living, it is very, very difficult for me to read my own poetry. Uh, and I think that's true for, uh, for most people. Uh, it, it, it draws on, uh, on emotions that uh, are difficult to articulate. So in advance, I apologize for what may not be the best of readings, but certainly I promise you they will come from the heart. Thank you, and I hope that uh, you enjoy at least some of it. O oh, to Innocence. O oh, half-remembered fleeting happy time when nothing mattered more than love and play. Imagination was then in its prime, and life began anew with every day. A flower was then a joy, a mystery, and not a petal, root, and simple stem. And life was full of wondrous fantasy, untainted by the intellect of man. That time is gone now, it cannot return. The fruit's been swallowed, its slow poison kills. And yet my fallen heart will always yearn for that most happy time of unknown skills. O oh, false God knowledge, daily you destroy all that was holy in me as a boy. Siren Song Poetry is a dangerous siren song that calls the soul towards a chasm deep, dulling the mind and making the heart long for that which it may touch, yet never keep. A sonnet is too much the friend of truth and leaves no room for self-deluding lies. It conjures up the honesty of youth and artifice through artifice soon dies. Essential truths will spill onto the page 
transpiring through the pores of consciousness, leaving exposed the battles that we wage to build facades of hope for hopelessness. I can deny the painful song I hear, but it's too late. Its message is too clear. The Pages of My Life I read the pages of my life so clear, its images dismissed as pains of youth, and yet, though far, I see them all so clear, relive the fear, hope, warmth, glimmers of truth. Vague shadows visit me and leave behind uneasy feelings draped in tenderness. I see too well, yet wish that I were blind and fear above all else my truthfulness. If only I believed that I could find one path in life to follow faithfully, how sad that knowledge can be so unkind and pain the wages of our honesty. I'd gladly give my life for peace of mind, yet no, in life it is not mine to find. Is there not more to life? Is there not more to life than suffering? At times it seems we live only to die. Happiness comes most often in our dreams, brushing our souls a moment, passing by. Where are the hopes of youth? When did they fade? Ephemeral shades of fragile, tender hearts. When did we break the promises we made? How brief the light, how dark the night which starts. I still remember once upon a time, sweet evanescent images still come, bearing both pain and ecstasy sublime in ghostly visions of dreams nearly gone. If there is meaning to life beyond the pain, it's so hard to discern through all the rain. Sonnet to a Friendly Critic When did she lose touch with my inner heart? Was it so long ago she held it near? It was so easy from the very start to share it all with one I love so dear. How can she thumb through the pages of my life and find fault with the words at every turn. So easily she crosses out a line, ignoring all that from it she could learn. I smile, she smiles, but does not understand. And she goes on perusing through my soul. In just a moment, I will take her hand and we may both yet smile as we grow old. Our love is strong, its long-fueled flame still burns, but what is gone will never more return. Sonnet for C.R. 1988 I tried so hard to share my love with you. I tried so hard to share my love with you, to make you see the dream I saw so clear. Yet you could not believe my words were true, could not let go of your consuming fear. I waited, hoping for some subtle change, ignoring every sign it would not come, until the dream was clearly out of range, and hope an evanescent shadow gone. The emptiness I feel knows no regret, so do not weep for me, sweetest of friends. Each fleeting moment shared I'll not forget. I know what love is now and how it ends. The love I felt will live while I take breath, the dream I'll carry with me to my death. Death of a Quiet Soldier 
Behind enemy lines you gave your life, the risks you knew and embraced willingly. Red, black, and green berets fought by your side and brought your body back to family. Later, in a ritual of their own, they would name a field airport in your name and honor you, your brothers, far from home. Their memory now, your eternal flame. I do not know your rank, your name, your face. I only know that I am in your debt. Who for your family can take your place? Our debt to them we must never forget. The freedom I enjoy comes thanks to you and all who serve with honor, proud and true. Old Poems I've read some poems I'd written long ago, tenderly kept by one I love most dear, and through them I've come to once again know old feelings which inspired both warmth and fear. For a moment I saw my love revived, and was engulfed by growing tenderness. There was much power in words which survived, to pay mute homage to past happiness. Yellowing, crinkled paper brought to me glimpses of young, unbridled, simple love. The awkward, fading words helped me to see that I have lived the dream I'm dreaming of. How can I feel this painful emptiness when by enduring love I am so blessed? Secret Love I've stayed too long, at least a week or two, and now I wonder, can I leave at all? Running away is all I seem to do, walking the edge, afraid to rise or fall. We've shared a thousand secrets in a glance, poured out our hearts and watched them drain away, viewed the same dream each through a separate stance, soothing our pain so night turn into day. I am most vulnerable in your sight. You leave no walls for me to hide behind. You make me laugh through tears at my own plight and search for answers I don't want to find. If there's one hope I'll cling to in the end is that I may always call you friend. Falling how can I tell you, dearest friend of all, what you have meant and mean right now to me? Through deepest silence you can hear my call, your eyes see through my soul, set my ghosts free. Weary, so weary is this heart of mine, nor is there for me any rest in sight. How can I feel so helpless and so fine, stumbling through darkness, bathed in steady light? Such easy riddles I weave with a smile, they need no sword to solve them, nor much wit. Yet of no answers, at least none worthwhile, only a puzzle whose pieces won't fit. My writing, music, and old friends are here, gone are my soul and my word, though, I fear. Unwaning Love O oh, fast approaching vision of despair, radiating an aura of faint hope, I still discern a hint of what is fair, but dimly as a star through a weak scope. I ask redundant questions, knowing well there are no simple answers I can find. I quiver at a faintly tolling bell fearing above all else to be unkind. Sweet dream remembered, such a happy dream, simple and pure as a child's heartfelt kiss, an evanescent vision it would seem, like a quick 
fading springtime morning mist. The child in me rejoices with some glee. The man weeps for his word and sanity. Imperfect Love The quest has been a long one, and I find myself unable to continue it. I have seen days and weeks and years unwind, wasting my time and youth bit by slow bit. Striving for perfect love I've come to know, it exists only in a dreamer's heart. And while waiting for it to somehow grow, I've ignored pure love offered from the start. I need to wake, and yet I fight to sleep, that I might dream and there find happiness. I close my eyes, my ears, my mind, and keep my airy castles safe from truthfulness. I feel my slumbers ending, and I fear the chill of wakefulness as it draws near. For Devon Short on the tragic death of a five-year-old boy. A little angel winks from up above, the littlest fireman in God's domain, bathed in God's grace, covered with his love, untouched by earthly cares, worries, or pain. Too soon your race was done, Devon, dear child, only five summer suns warmed your sweet face, and yet you brought much joy for one so mild to all who knew your smile, felt your embrace. Tears mark your passing in a time too brief. We wish God had less pressing need of you. Your family struggles now to bear their grief. Lord, grant them peace and strength their whole lives through. Your spirit flies now high above the sky, lifted by love that will not, cannot die. Unfading Dreams Why have you left me, sweet old dreams of youth? I tried so hard to hold you in my heart. Where have they fled? faith, honesty, and truth, or were they only visions from the start? Do I hear music deep within my soul, or mocking echoes of a bygone time? Embers still glow, though I am growing old, but they grow dark and cold, as does my rhyme. Each passing moment wears away my hope, as does the blowing sand the desert stone. Symphonies fading to a single note, leaving me empty, bitter, and alone. I grieve not for my life, I have more sense. I grieve for greater loss, my innocence. Requiem for Mom, Lita, 1929 to 2018. You were only seven when you went blind, but could see again in less than two years. Two years later, you were seeking to find full-time work to help your mom ease her fears. Eight brothers and a sister home, and dad dead, from fascists' caresses in dark, dank cells. You rolled up your sleeves without tears or dread, worked full-time packing fish and working wells. At 16, you left for a foreign shore, worked hard, learned to read, save all you could to pay mom's passage and two brothers more, keeping a promise as you knew you would. Of your son, you were as proud as can be, but one of your cells was worth ten of me. Athena, <clears throat> goddess of wisdom, justice, inspiration, law, 
warrior god is that is nobly so much more than in what ages past held the known world in awe as the patron goddess of all heroic lore he sprang from zeus's head and armor fully formed grew to be among the gods his favorite child a warrior who as patron the arts transformed fiercest defender of truth enemy of guile you live today in every woman's heart who knows the road to freedom is not paved with words of air in the fertile ashes of battles freedom grows those battles fought and won by women everywhere you paragon among all heroes from the start live on triumphantly in every woman's heart and that uh, concludes this simple poetry uh, reading i hope uh, you enjoyed it and I very much appreciate uh, your, uh, your listening. If you're interested in uh, finding some uh, additional samples of uh, my work, uh, including uh, other uh, sonnets and blank verse, free verse, uh, you know, haikus, etc., uh, please visit hellopoetry.com. You can find me as Victor D. Lopez uh, or allpoetry.com, also uh, Victor D. Lopez. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, during this uh, difficult time for all of us uh, during the uh, pandemic, I hope that uh, you and your families will stay safe. Thanks again for listening and take care.